Hello friends, in the previous session, we had concluded our discussion about the EMF across the armature and the torque generated in the armature, which is also called the induced torque. We had finished the derivation and in this particular session, I had told you we are going to start with the explanation about armature reaction with respect to MMF graphs. Now, remember that already we have extensively uh, discussed armature reaction for that you can see the previous videos. I'll try to put up a card for that. All right. But this particular session will be only based on certain graphs. All right. Now, this is the diagram which we have all known till now. Okay. This is a very familiar diagram. You can clearly see this time around I have actually, let me just take a bigger pen. Yeah. I have actually drawn north and south, but I have shown some windings here. I am showing some current is flowing. This is to show that the field, field is actually created by electromagnets. So therefore, this will become the field winding. What is this called? This is called the field winding. All right. This is called the field winding. The winding that produces the main field flux is called the field winding. So I have wound the uh, ferromagnetic material with uh, windings. I have supplied some current which will produce a polarity if you see from north to south like this. So the polarity here will be from north to south in this direction. Okay. Rest of the things are all similar. But here now I have just turned the reverse the direction of rotation that is actually for a better explanation in the graph all right so nothing is going to change but for my uh, easy explanation i have just shifted the uh, direction of rotation from counterclockwise to clockwise let's see what will be the current direction now i want you to find that now so here if you see you will get a cross here also cross here also cross here no emf at this time and the rest of the positions you will be getting a dot okay so here you are having a dot here you are having a dot and here you are having a dot all right and faithful brushes are here these are all very basic things and this is the magnetic neutral plane old okay you know that they are going to shift okay they are going to shift right uh, because of armature reaction and all so we will deal with all those things in the uh, in a few minutes now before starting with these concepts we have to just have a basic idea about mmf a very basic idea, no need of any field theory explanations. Okay, so MMF is the magnetomotive force. Magnetomotive force, and it is analogous to the electrical equivalent, which is called the electromotive force. Electromotive force, or it is called the EMF. Okay, now what does EMF do? EMF drives current current through the circuit okay what the mmf does it drives the magnetic equivalent of the current which is the flux phi across the circuit this is the only thing that we have to know and what is the equation mmf is equal to the number of turns multiplied by the current or the unit is ampere turns the unit is ampere turn so here for this field winding if there are n number of turns the mmf produced by this field uh, winding will be n into i and that mmf will drive the flux okay? so indirectly just like voltage is driving the current mmf drives the flux this is the explanation that we require for the time being okay now let us just uh, convert this diagram into a simpler form here so that we will get something like this so this is north and this is south all right so let me just make a positional map of these conductors. So here you are having one conductor, conductor number one, and this is one dash. Remember that this is not a top view, side view, nothing. It is just a positional map. You will understand the importance in the in a few minutes. So this is the position which I am drawing. All right. So this conductor here. So this is mapped here. All right. So this is two, two dash, three, three dash, and four, four dash, and the machine is going to draw go in this particular direction now what i am going to do is that i am going to cut the machine from this section okay i am going to cut the machine here and i am going to draw the developed diagram of this machine to understand the concepts more clearly okay Now here I have the developed diagram, alright, I had uh, already drawn this and kept because otherwise it will become boring, okay. So now I am having the developed diagram here and we are going to do 
some analysis on this particular diagram okay now there are some important points here so this is one point which is important another point all these points which i am marking are very important points and it will be on these points that we are going to draw the graph now you can clearly see when i develop the diagram if i cut from this area and I expand like this four dash will come here somewhere here and after that one will come after that two which i have drawn like this okay so if you have not seen the developed diagram you can see that for better understanding okay now first let us draw the mmf of the main field flux main field flux okay mmf of the main field flux so that main field flux will exist in this under this pole right and under the pole the flux is almost constant the main field mmf is almost constant throughout the pole therefore if i take this north here the north will produce a flux in this direction right an mmf is causing the north to flow in this direction just like a voltage causes a current to flow in a particular direction similarly a particular mmf makes the flux flow in this direction and the flux in the south will be like this okay so what will be the mmf let me assume that for a flux direction from top to bottom the mmf is positive okay this is the first assumption i'm going to make for sign conventions all right so it will be a constant value throughout the pole phase right it will be something like this constant value throughout the pole phase but in these areas just outside the pole which means this area this area etc the flux is not going to be zero there will be a slight amount of flux there also so there will be a little bit of mmf therefore at one particular point the mmf would be zero but the mmf would gradually increase and under the pole phases it will reach a maximum value now what is this particular area here this particular area is corresponding to this area here okay conductor number 3 i have shown here okay so this 3 is this area and this is called actually between the poles it is called the interpole axis it is called the interpole axis and uh, the axis of the poles is called the direct axis so there are many explanations for all these things you can go through all those things later okay so i have drawn all these things and kept and where will be your brush kept your brush will be in this particular position okay so till here at this particular pole phase see this let me just make a bigger pen here. at this particular pole phase the mmf would reach its maximum value then mmf would again drop and at the interpolar area there is not going to be any mmf because there is no influence there okay the mmf would be zero and this graph would continue like this and the south will corresponding to a negative mmf and this is the simple graph which we have drawn so this is the uh, flux mmf of the main field okay main field now let us draw the armature mmf how is armature mmf cause when the current is flowing through the armature it will create a magnetic field okay that magnetic field will produce mmf and that will produce an armature flux okay so now we have to draw the armature mmf okay so for that first let us draw the current directions here so this particular conductors had the cross right see 2 1 and 4 dash had the cross so let me put that here so conductor okay so these three conductors had the cross okay this conductor has no emf and these three conductors had the dot here okay so now let us draw the field directions now so this is a cross so therefore it will have a clockwise field right it will have a clockwise field so these three conductors here one two and three they will have a clockwise field something like this okay so let me just make it a little bit more neat these diagrams are very difficult to draw digitally it's easier to draw on pen and paper but the computer it's difficult yeah so this side also there will be a field okay so these three conductors 4 dash 1 and 2 will have a clockwise field something like this okay and this will have a counterclockwise field okay 
Now the question comes, if I have dropped the MMF at this particular area, for 4 dash if I have to draw the MMF, what direction should I draw? Should be in the positive, should be in the negative. Now, from top to bottom, I have taken the direction. If the MMF causing a flux, if MMF is causing a flux, from top to bottom, that MMF is positive. But here, the MMF is causing a flux to flow from bottom to top. Therefore, that will be negative. Okay. So, this particular area, the MMF would be negative. Okay. So, there I am going to put a negative value. Okay. This particular area, okay, this particular area, what happens in one and one dash? So, it looks like this. It looks like something like this. Okay. Now, in this particular area, what happens is that there are no flux which is cutting the coin. There is no flux which cuts the coin. Therefore, the number of turns which effectively cuts the coil is zero. Therefore, the MMF associated there will also be equal to zero. So here your MMF would be 0. Okay. These are some important points which we have to take here. Now here you can see in the third position here 2 conductor number 2. Here the main field MMF is like this and the armature MMF is also in the same direction. Okay. Therefore it will have a positive value. Okay. So here somewhere we can show it to have a positive value and this particular conductor here number 3 Number 3 has the maximum MMF. Why? Because the entire flux is going to cut here. The entire flux is going to cut there. Okay. So, it has the maximum. So, MMF is going to peak at this particular area. So, under 3, MMF is going to peak. So, if I draw, this would be a linear graph, something like this. It would come here like this. Here again, the MMF would be 0. So, it would continue its path. And it would go like this. So, this is the armature. Okay, now I have pasted the diagram in a new page. Now, let us find what will be the net MMF. Now, the net MMF will be the main field MMF plus the armature MMF. Okay, vector sum. Alright, so let us take some important points here. Let us take this point here. Let us take this point, this point, this point and this point. So, we are going to draw it accordingly. Now, at this particular point here, at this particular point, the main field MMF is 0, but the armature MMF is having a value in the negative direction, alright. And as you continue, as you continue in time, what would happen is that there would be a value somewhere around here, say, where the armature MMF and the main field MMF would be exactly same and in opposite directions. Therefore, that area, the net MMF would be equal to 0 because if both values are equal and opposite, the value would be 0. So, in between from this point, from this point here, as it is traveling, there will be a point somewhere here where the MMF actually becomes 0. So, we start at this point and somewhere around here, the MMF becomes 0. Okay, so, at, at this point, say, the MMF becomes 0. Now, the flux is constant, the main field flux is constant here and the armature flux is decreasing towards 0. Therefore, effectively, See the diagram, if this is decreasing, okay, decreasing towards 0, effectively phi net would increase, right, F net would increase and it would have a graph something like this. It would start increasing slowly but steadily like this. Now, let us take at this point here. This point, what happens is that the armature MMF is 0. See, the armature MMF is 0, but the main field MMF has a particular value there. Therefore, the total value will be equal to the main field MMF. Okay. So, phi net will be equal to phi main plus 0, f main plus 0. So, it will gradually increase and at this point it will coincide. So, this will be the net MMF. After this point, you can see there is a constant value and there is an increasing value. Therefore, the graph will follow this particular path set by the armature flux. So, it would gradually increase, gradually increase till this point here. And after this point, you can see after this point, the flux, main field flux is decreasing. So, effectively, the net flux also has to decrease, right? And let us analyze this point now. This point here. This point, the main field flux is 0, but the armature MMF has a particular value. Therefore, at that point, the phi net will be equal to 0 plus phi of armature. Okay. 
so the net flux would gradually decrease and it would come to this particular point here hmm? now you can see the armature flux in the positive direction and this is in the negative direction the main field flux is in the negative direction so at that some point here these two values will be exactly the same and at that point the net flux will be zero so it would come like this and it would reach here and the process would continue and the process would continue all right so this is basically the net mmr now let us see some particular points here now this was the brush axis right or the interpole axis or this was our old magnetic neutral plane this was our old magnetic neutral plane which is this particular point here but now look at what has happened the net mmf is getting zero at this point this point here so this is our new magnetic neutral plane where the mmf is equal to zero okay so i hope it is clear now it look at this point here look at this point here the mmf had a direction the main field mmf had a direction like this and the armature mmf also had a direction like that so therefore there you are having a field strengthening earlier the field was here now the field has increased to this value therefore you are have field strengthening at this particular area this area here this particular pole this particular pole tip earlier the field was here but look at what is the field is now so here you are having the flux weakening so this area corresponds to the flux weakening and this particular area corresponding to the flux strengthening okay we have seen all these things but in terms of graphical representation we are seeing it now with all these in mind what will be the armature flux finally okay so let us just draw the armature flux now all right now let us draw the armature flux now till now we have drawn the armature mmf sorry not the armature mmf the net mmf now let us draw the net flux now you have to remember just like current is voltage by resistance the flux is the mmf by reluctance so reluctance is the uh, analogous to the resistance value okay to flux path now you should know that under the pole the flux can easily move but in the interpole area there is no pole therefore the flux has a higher reluctance in the interpole under the pole low reluctance under the pole uh, interpole higher reluctance all right now let us draw the net flux we are having the net mmf and let us draw the net flux now before that you know that voltage is equal to v by r similarly flux is equal to mmf by reluctance now reluctance is the easiness with which flux can flow in a magnetic circuit now under the poles you are having low reluctance okay the air gap is very less between the armature so if this is the armature the air gap is very tiny so the flux can easily flow but in this particular area the air gap is huge therefore there you are having high reluctance high reluctance means low flux okay so let's just draw some lines here like this just to show that point here so the net flux would gradually increase gradually increase gradually increase till say at this point now at this point you can see that the mmf is still increasing but what will happen is that before reaching that particular point the flux inside the pole will saturate only that much amount of flux can flow how much ever mmf you can if you put because that is called saturation therefore before this point itself the core will start get saturating and it will reach a steady value after it reaches the pole tip this particular area here this particular area it has huge reluctance huge reluctance it is having okay so what will happen because of that huge reluctance the flux will drop flux will drop till here okay and from here to the next pole you can clearly see here it is going to gain a little bit of polarity because it the <coughs> mmf would increase right if you are going to the next pole the mmf would gradually increase so flux also would increase and it would flow like this and it would continue its path like this so this is the armature flux it basically follows the mmf but due to saturation at the pole tips it would decrease its value around at this point okay and it would start to decrease due to high reluctance so i hope you have 
understood this particular session there are a lot of graphs involved i know it is not necessary to complicate things this much a basic understanding would suffice but then when you take a course you are supposed to explain things in all possible manner so if you have liked this video please like share and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next session thank you